Hello everyone, my name is English Rebel, and today I'm going to be playing through the Pokemon fan game Pokemon Gaia. This is widely considered one of, if not the best fan made Pokemon game. So, I'm going to be hardcore nose looking my first time playing it. And, even though it's like four years old, I thought it would still be fun to go back in time to the days of Tyranitar 2. And, if you enjoy this type of content, pause the video, scroll down, and click subscribe. It is completely free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Now, with that out of the way, let's begin. The game starts with our mum telling us to grab an old book we got from the library and deliver it to this old woman who tells us it's an old heirloom of hers. But, by the rules of finders keepers, we say no, until we realise we don't have any Pokemon on hand, and hand over the book. We then decide to get our own Pokemon from Professor Redwood in the library. But, as they mention needing helpers, this girl just up and leaves. Then, we get to choose our Pokemon from the Sinnoh lineup. So, I decide to choose the water starter, Piplup, and name them Fluorite. Then, after the professor tells us to meet in the next town over, we get introduced to our rival, we name Umi. After arriving, we get the professor's package, which gives us some key items, and also we receive Pokeballs, which means the Nuzlocke has begun. Our rival then decides to battle us, but we eventually take them down, allowing us to get our first encounter, Calcite the Zubat, as well as Lithium the Zigzagoon. Then, find a hidden dungeon with a Clefairy inside, we name Platinum. Then, after working out there must be some sort of second entrance to the cave Professor Redwood was looking for, they suggest taking on the Fairy-type gym to kill some time while they look, and that's exactly what we do. They start with Clefairy and we start with Lithium, who manages to flinch twice with Headbutt, as they heal and hit with Rock Smash before taking them down. Next is Ralts, so we switch to Platinum to take the hit and confuse them, try Metronome and fail, confuse them again and use a new move called Charming Cry to get them low enough to go down from the confusion. Finally, it's Jigglypuff. And after trading blows, we switch to Fluorite to bubble three times, putting them in the red for Calcite to finish the job, beating the gym. However, in true Whitney fashion, the kid runs off into Wisp Forest, and after talking with his granddad about it, we promise to take him home. And, after finding a Starly we name Silver, a Ralts named Quartz, and a Litwick we name Amber, we finally find him and get his badge, and send him back home to the daycare couple, who gives us the TM for Cut. We then utilise Cut to gain access to the new cave that houses a massive stone tablet of a Tangrowth, which has ancient glyphs that can only be translated by an old friend of the professors, named Herschel in Aero City. But on our way there, our starter evolves into Primplup, along with Silver evolving into Staravia. Then, after binding Herschel, we see him being asked for help by someone else and after approaching and seeing our Redwood card from the package we received, he gladly accepts to help after explaining what is needed. So we head back to the cave as he explains the details of Apex Temple. So the professor gives us the TM for Rock Smash to get up Mount Ignis and explore the temple. But first, we get a timber we name Iron, find a secret grove with a Maractus we call Gypsum, and finally catch a Sfeel named Boxite. All in preparation to fight our rival once again. They start with Makuhita, so we switch to Silver who takes the Fake Owl and can one shot with Wing Attack, bringing in Rog and Roller. So we switch to Fluorite to take them out after three Bubble Beams. Then it's Grottle, so we switch to Silver again to take them out with a couple of Wing Attacks. Finally leaving their Swablu, who, after going to Quartz and forgetting they're not Dragon-type yet, switch to Lithium to finish the job. And as a reward for beating him, we get the old EXP share item. Then, in preparation for the Flying Gym, Lithium evolves into Linoon, as well as Quartz evolving into Curlia. Try to understand this really cool music puzzle to get to the Gym Leader, and take them on. They start with Volibee and we start with Platinum, which uses two Charming Cries to take them out. Then it's Gligar, 
So we switch to Florite, who one-shots them with Bubble Beam. Finally is Chatter. So we Rock Tomb once with Florite before switching to Silver to take a Chatter, and then go to Calcite to try and confuse them, which succeeds. So we go to Lithium on another hit. They then heal as we crit with a headbutt, allowing us luckily to finish the fight in one more hit, giving us the Plume Badge. We then explore Frostbite Cave, until we see the lady that was asking for Herschel's help at the museum, who tells us not to mess with their business. But we ignore them and take care of the lackeys until Eunice takes matters into their own hands. They start with Snova and we start with Amber, who one-shots them. Then it's Frostlass, and after burning them and missing our attack, we switch to Calcite, who can bite twice to take them out. Then it's Knocked Out. So we go to Florite on the Confusion and hit them with a Rock Tomb, after they set up a Reflect. But luckily, the next one is a Crit, which takes them out. Finally, it's Amora. So we go to Lithium, we can take an Ancient Power, and hit back with Rock Smash, until we get too low and have to switch again. Knowing a sacrifice was needed, we went to Silver to deal as much chip damage as possible. Rest in peace, Silver. You are never as good as gold. But this allows us to send in Lithium for free and take them out with the one last rock smash. After the loss, we needed to change the team, and so employed Iron, who evolves into a Gerda, and Borksite, who evolves into Celio, as well as catching Silica, the Snova. Chromite the Cub Chew, and Copper the Gola. And when we catch up with Umi, we see the Apex Temple currently overrun by grunts, until we go deeper and see another leader, Enoch, talking about awakening Regirock. So I took a look at the book he was using, and decided to take it with us for research. Back at the Poke Center, we discuss what happened until the Professor appears, and we give him the rundown of their plan, until he recommends we head to Swablu Island, and while we wait for the ship, evolve Calcite into Crobat, do this infuriating ice puzzle, and take on the Fire-type Gym Leader. They start with Pignite and we start with Calcite, who can two-shot them with Wing Attack, and a crit. Then it's Magma, so we switch to Fluorite, which was a mistake, and then switch again into Iron, who uses Rock Throw three times after one of them misses. Then it's Camerupt, so we switch to Borksite to take the Flame Charge and hit back with two Brines after living the Rock Slide. Finally it's Heatmore, so after contemplating who should go in, we switch to Lithium. They take the hit and manage to get themselves both in the red, so we switch again to Amber who gets paralysed by the Lick, but eventually finishes them off with Hex, winning us the Ember Badge. Outside the gym, we meet with the professor who tells us he can revive fossils, which I forgot about, and also gave us a bike voucher, which I also forgot about. <laughs> so we head straight to the area where the ship was arriving, had a battle to pass the time, and made our way to Sar Blue Island, where we caught Gold the Electrike and evolved Quartz into Mummy, sorry, Mummy, sorry, Mu Gardevoir. Then we climbed the Mega Tower and met with Belle, who can give us a Mega Stone if we defeat her in battle. So we do. She starts with Heracross and we start with Calcite, who can one-shot them easily. Then they bring in Mainetric, so we switch to Copper who avoids the Thunder Wave, but gets flinched by Bite. So we switch to Iron who can take the Bite and hit hard with a Guts boosted Low Kick, and afterwards get a crit. Then it's Odno, so we switch to Calcite after they decide to Mega Evolve taking the hit and taking them down after four Poison Fangs. Next up is Sableye, so we go to Quartz, who takes the Fake Out and Shadow Sneak to one-shot them with a Draining Kiss. Finally, it's Marwell, so we pivot to Amber, who takes a Bite, but gets them burned by Flame Body. So we go to Florite, who can finish them off with two Bubble Beams, giving us the Mega Ring. However, as we exit the building, there's an earthquake from a cave as Regirock emerges from it. We are then asked to check it out after getting healed up by Bell. So, investigating, we see Enoch waiting to catch Regirock for their own gain. So, we have to take them out. Which we do after taking down the grunts and facing off 
against Enoch. They start with Tyrantrum and we start with Calcite and immediately peace out to Florite as they set up Stealth Rocks on a Tyrantrum. Anyway, after they crit with Bite, we Bubble Beam twice until they get in the red. So we switch to Quartz and they get a crit and Omni Boost. Thankfully, we still outspeed and take them out with a Magical Leaf. So they send in Golug and we switch to Gypsum to take the Shadow Punch so we can Giga Drain, which lets us survive another hit and takes them out next turn. Then it's Aerodactyl. So we go to Copper, who takes the Fire Fang, but I foolishly thought they wouldn't have Bite as well. So Copper goes down. With that, I switch to Calcite and use Confuse Ray as they get us low. I then switch to Gypsum as they hit themselves twice allowing us to Giga Drain and crit, which definitely mattered. Finally, it's Diggersby, and after they use Sword Stance, we get back to full, and they take themselves out with Takedown. Enoch then casually catches a Legendary using something called a Relic Ball, and leaves in a hurry. Inside was a Ragged Mat as Umi enters and gives us Surf, so we can head to Valoon Town and take on the gym. We then met with Belle again, and as thanks for dealing with Enoch, they give us a Charmeleon we call Halite, holding a Y Megastone. After all of that, we manage to find a Marowak we call Nickel, as well as Potash, the Rufflet, Zeliorite, the Skrelp, Vanadium, the Yanma, Gabbro, the Cottony, Miskas, the Durant, and Galena, the Pinsir. Exploring the cave, we find the best tablet of a Lilith that the rangers have been investigating for some time, which we see is important as grunts and someone named Ezekiel are also searching for it. In preparation for the gym, we evolve Amber into Lampent and then evolve them again into Chandelure using a Duskstone. Evolve Vanadium into Young Mega, Fluorite into Empoleon and Halite into a Charizard. And with that out of the way, we begin the fight. They start with Shuckle and we start with Florite, who uses Surf to get them in the red as they use Stealth Rocks. And after them healing, we are able to take them out. Next is Scizor, so we switch to Amber who takes the U-turn and they go to Masquerade. So we again switch to Vanadium, take a Brine and take them down with Ancient Power, forcing them to go to Beedrill who Mega Evolves as we detect to see what it's going for. So, we then switch to Florite, who takes the hit and uses Aerial Ace to deal a bit of damage to Sizzle. So, we go to Calcite, predicting the U-turn, so we can kill Beedrill with Acrobatics, leaving just the Sizzle to be taken out by just two more Acrobatics, winning us the Gym Badge. Outside the Gym, we see Umi approach to give us a Gas Mask for the area ahead, so we can get Biotite the Gumi and afterwards have an unexpected rival battle with Umi after they heal our Pokemon for us. They start with Hariyama and we start with Calcite, who can bypass the fake out with inner focus and one shot with acrobatics. Then they bring in Boldor, so we switch to Florite and can take them out without even getting a scratch, but they do manage to get up stealth rocks. Next is Rotom, so we switch to Gypsum, who gets burned on the switch, and can get each other in the red after they get an Omni Boost. And because of that, we sacrifice them. So we go to Iron, who can clean up after we miss both of our moves the first time, which then brings in Altaria. I combat this by going to Quartz, who takes a hit and two shots them with Draining Kiss. Then it's the worst evolution. So we go to Florite to practically drown them as they finally bring in Torterra. So we go to Iron who can low kick three times thanks to them using Curse. And as we head into the city we see a biker called Akuto who runs the whole city with his gang warning us not to interfere with their business. So we proceed to meddle in their business to save this girl from one of Akuto's men. And after being healed by the lady, we are faced with Arkato and his underlings. All is fine until we have to face off without being healed from the previous fights, where during the fight, 
Iron went down to a double edge bouffant with a workup on them, but eventually took it down along with the rest of his team. He then gives us the TM for Fly as a means of helping them take down his competition, the New Elders. And if you've made it to this point in the video, you must already be subscribed. So why not hit that notification bell too, so you can stay up to date with my currently inconsistent upload schedule. Moving on, we then get to evolve Gold into a Manetric, catch Knight the Clef Key, and take on the Poison type Gym Leader. However, this fight is an absolute cakewalk, getting Oko after Oko after Oko until we both Mega Evolve and take them down with two Flame Bursts. Outside, Umi found someone who knows what the new Elders are doing, and after scaring him after taking down Akuto, he tells us that they plan to catch Registeel in the Fairy Ruins. And after racing across the underground, meet with Herschel, who gives us the TM for Rock Climb. And with that, catch Marble the Electabuzz, Stone the Nose Pass, and after finding Ezekiel outside the front of the tomb, monologuing about the new Elder's accelerated plans, he closes the door behind him leaving us to open it ourselves and confronting him inside. He starts with Skarmory and we start with Amber, who one-shots them with Flame Burst. So they go to Dewblade and we can just Oko them again. Then they send in Claydol, who gets hit hard with Hex but retaliates with Earth Power, and after healing goes down. Next is the best Pokemon Craigdilly, so we go to Florite and Metal Claw them but not before getting us quite low with Giga Train. Finally, it's Agron, so we switch to Nickel to deal a bunch of damage with Bone Club until we barely miss the kill and go down, leaving Florite to finish the job. He leaves and outsiders Umi who heals our Pokemon and tells us to head to Brikamo's Island for our next gym badge. On our way there though, we get Slate the Mantine evolve Stone into Probopass and evolve Marble into Electivire. And when entering the gym, we see Will, the Psychic type gym leader from Kanto on holiday as a gym leader, and take them on. They start with Zatu and we start with Marble, who kills in one shot. So they go to Jinx, and because we're banded, we switch to Halcite, who can also one shot them. Next is Slowbro. So we switch back to Marble after they Mega Evolve to hit hard with Thunder Punch, but they get us into the red. So we pivot to Stone and then Galena to resist the move and kill with Exorcism, but we just miss out and go down to Psychic. Meaning we bring in Vanadium, who can take them out with two Bug Buzzers after they full restore. Then it's Executar, and by surprise, they go down in one shot, even with a Calm lined up. Finally, it's Metagross, and after switching to Halite, can take them down in one shot after living a critical hit, winning us the Focus Badge. Afterwards, we deal with some thieves trying to take from someone, and after beating them with ease, the old man wakes up and assumes we're room service. But after showing our Redwood card, he tasks us with taking his tablet idol to At Sale City Lab, so they can research it further. Outside, we see Umi, who asks us to battle, in which we manage to wipe the floor with them. And, after suggesting going into a diving tour, which also gives us the TM for dive as well, letting us catch Feldspar, the Pelipper, and Genus, the Excadrill. All before arriving at the Meteor Festival, that goes wrong because of the earthquakes, scaring off the Clefairy. The old man in shambles asks us to find the Clefairy, and save the annual tradition. After what felt like two hours of trying to do this fur throw like puzzle, we catch them and continue the old man's tradition that is revered by everybody. And in exchange for help, he gives us the Master Ball. We can then go to train up Biotite, who evolves into a Sligu, and evolve Silica into a Bomber Snow in preparation to take on Marina. They start with Quillfish and we go for Quartz, who unsurprisingly Oko's both them and the Kingdra, thanks to a crit. Then it's Jellison, so we switch to Gold, who gets them really low after being hit with Hex, and unluckily the Skull burns us, meaning Gold goes down at the 
end of the turn. We bring in Marble to Thunder Punch to Oko after they full restore, possibly being able to save gold in that exchange. But we move on, and after getting Mega Gyarados into the yellow, they Dragon Dance. So we have to switch as they surely have EQ. Sending in Silica, instead they heal, so we Icy Wind to reduce their speed as they match us with more Dragon Dances, until we trade Pokemon with Wood Hammer doing too much recoil leaving only Pelipper to be taken down by Marble's Thunder Punch. We then catch Corundum, the Amolga, do some more story beats, and find a new Elders meeting going on with that lady that took our book in the beginning, telling them to meet at Ignis Roost for the final phase. So we talk to the Professor and waste no time at all getting to the top. However, as we enter it, turns out to be all a ruse to make us come to this location as an ambush, and so they fight us themselves. The fight goes well until we come across their Mega Gengar. After making a foolish switch to Quartz, because I could never remember the generation Gengar changes from Levitate to Curse Body, meaning we go down to Shadow Ball, when we could have easily lived and taken them down. Afterwards we see the new Elders raiding the lab and taking the Tablet Idol for their own gain and with that decided to collapse the entrance, making us trapped, until Umi sees the bright side and thinks that there must be a secret exit, and after searching, find a breakable wall that heads down into lower floors where we have to take on three Regigiguses, using every type of Regi until we finally find the exit, leading to Ignis Valley, which we'll have to explore later. We deduce that we need the help of Herschel who knows how to teach a special move called Molten Rays that lets us activate the tablet to take us to Regigigas' tomb. However, he won't help us due to not wanting to be involved with politics and religions, and will only teach the move to worthy trainers, and being that we have 7 badges, we head to Lomas Town for the last badge. On our way, Chromite evolves into Beartic, and we use a Sunstone on Gabbro to evolve them into Whimsicott. And after literally a whole hour of battling and puzzles, we finally make it to the last gym leader. They start with Hippowdon and we start with Halite, and do a trick to Mega Evolve and switch out in order to replace the Sandstream with Drought. Going into Feldspar and getting poisoned, we can then Surf once until we get down in the red and switch again to Chromite and take them down with Ice Crash. Then it's Garchomp, and because it most likely is going to EQ, I switch to Slate as they Mega Evolve and use Fire Fang. And foolishly thinking I outspeed, wanted to deal some chip damage, we get taken out. So we go to Halite, who can trade blows and bait using Dragon Rush. So we can switch to Gabbro and get revenge with Moonblast. Next is Gastrodon, who succumbs to the same fate and they send in Excadrill. So we switch as well into Borksite, who is unscathed by them after being greedy and wanting to Swords Dance twice. Finally it's Dugtrio, who gets two shot because of a low roll on the first attack, winning us the badge. We then get Rubidium, the Vibrava, and get another surprise rival fight, which causes us to lose Genesis because I predicted it would use an electric type move on Calcite, as well as Biotype because I forgot that Altaria's type changes from flying to fairy. But it all ends well and we can move on to Eco's Town, where Rubidium evolves into a Flygon, and we talk to Herschel about teaching us Molten Rays. Inside, he has trouble remembering us, and after explaining it's to save the world, he tells us no, and outside felt an earthquake that somehow came from Ignis Valley. And after catching Arsenic the Sigilyph, we see the new elders gathered in front of a tablet of Ho-Oh, and take on their leader, who has a Salamence that knows the move we need to defeat them, and deals us massive damage on a full HP Pokemon. But thankfully, we have Calcite, who gets two critical acrobatics to take them out. They then explain that they are going to free Regigigas by entering his tomb, as they use a revival herb on Salamence and teleport away. 
Witnessing this, Herschel decides to help us by telling us that there is another tablet broken and spread across three other tablets that can teleport us in there with the help of Herschel using his own Salamance. And after defeating each of the admins in each location, to go back to Herschel who can reconstruct the tablet in a last ditch effort to take down Morgana once and for all. And after another monologue from them, we proceed to take them on. They start with Miss Magius and we start with Stone. And after a back and forth, we switch to Calcite and they heal up. We are then able to two shot them with acrobatics. Next is Sigilith. So we switch to Marble and one shot them with Thunder Punch. Then it's Strapion. So we steamroll through because we were banded. And after sending Houndoom, we switch to Rubidium to one shot them. Finally, it's Gengar. And learning our lesson, we use EQ to one shot once again. But the fights aren't over yet. She then begins the ritual to free Regigigas by having all of the Regis in one place. And then they start the fight. Beginning with Regirock, we first switch to Rubidium to exchange his and leave them at 1 HP before taking them down. Then it's Regice, so we go to Stone to resist the hit and do as much damage as possible with them before they go down. So we go to Halite to get the revenge kill as they send in Registeel, who gets melted into scrap. Finally it's Regigigas himself, and after living on 14 HP, we can switch to our starter to resist their hits and take them down with a Surf, defeating the titans that move mountains. The Regis then flee which also restores Regigigas into its dormant state, as then Herschel appears with the police to arrest her and explains he has done what the elders intended to do, and keep the peace. This proves us to the point where he gives us the TM for Waterfall, and allows us to make our way to the Elite Four. And with that, we get our last two encounters, Protactium the Chansey and Cole the Boldor, leaving us with just the rival fight left. But to be honest, it was an absolute cakewalk, never in doubt in my Pokemon's abilities, as we enter to defeat the champion. First up is Elite Four member Nicola, who specialises in electric types. However, we have Rubidium, who practically sweeps through the whole team, EQing everything in their path, until Electros comes in with Levitate. So, we have to use Dragon Claw six times after they use some healing, and get us very low. So, as they bring in their Mega Main Electric, we switch to Marble to be immune to their electric type moves, and one-shot them with Banded EQ. Next is Elite Four member Leaf, who specialises in grass types no less. They start with Ludicolo and we start with Halite, so we switch to Calcite as they set up Rain. They then can outspeed to hit a Surf, but we are strong enough to live and one shot them with Acrobatics. So they send in Theraform, and we switch back to Halite, who can Mega Evolve to set up the Sun and one shot with Flamethrower. Then it's Whimsicott, who also gets one shot. And, after sending in Amoongus, we pivot to Vanadium. They use Spore to put us to sleep, meaning after we take a Sludge Bomb, go to Calcite and one-shot them as well. Next is Trevenant, so we go to Marble who can slowly whittle them down till they get torched by Fire Punch. Lastly, it's Sceptile, so we send in Gabbro who resists the Leaf Blade but gets crit on the x next turn, as we leave them on 1 HP. So, we go to Halite as they heal, but we resist most of their moves and can take them down in one shot. Then, it's Elite Four member Knight, who specialises in Dark types. They start with Bisharp and we start with Halite, who can easily Oko them after Mega Evolving. Then, they send in the Torpedo Sharpedo. So, we switch to Marble as they protect, but get the speed boost and after living in the red from an EQ, we one-shot them instead. They then send in Weavile, so we switch to Halite, who can take two Ice Shards and one-shot with a critical hit flamethrower, which was definitely overkill. So we pivot to Rubidium and take their fly, and get predicted on the switch to Calcite by the AI who uses Thunder Waves. So after being sucker punched and paralyzed, we go to Gabbro who outspeeds and one-shots them with Moonblast. 
Then it's Absol, who also gets one shot thanks to a critical hit, leaving just Malamar, who goes down in one shot to Vanadium's Bug Buzz, putting them in checkmate. Lastly, it's Elite Four member Kara, who specialises in fighting types. They start with Mian Xiao, who gets one shot by Calcite. Next, they send in Medicham. So, we U-turn to Vanadium as they try to set up, but we can take them out with Air Slash. Then, it's Halucha. So, we switch to Marble as they set up Home Claws to boost not only their attack, but also their accuracy as we make a fatal run killing decision to stay in, outspeeding and one-shotting us with a high jump kick. Devastated, we switch to Halide, who can mega evolve and one-shot after they try to set up more. Then it's Scrafty, who goes down to Gabro's Moonblast with another one-shot. So they bring in Blaziken, and not wanting Gabro to go down, we switch to Calcite, who comes in on a flare blitz, taking them down. We then revenge kill with Rubidium, being left on 5 HP as they bring in Lucario. Knowing it has E speed, we switch to Halite, who can one shot with Flamethrower, making our death count 13. And with only 4 more Pokemon for the champion, my hopes are not high. Taking on Herschel. They start with the barricade that is Waylord, who goes down to a pairing of air slashes and bug buzzes while also getting us to plus 4 speed. They then send in their own young mega, who goes down to a single ancient power, however we don't get the only boost. So they bring in Mamoswine, and after dealing a bit of damage they get a critical hit avalanche, which has to be the worst luck possible. So. We send in Halite, who can Mega Evolve and take them down in three flamethrowers. Then, both Tangrowth and Alexam get O Code, forcing their hand and sending in Salamence. And because they also Mega Evolve and we have a minus speed nature, they can finish the job, leaving just Rubidium and Gabro. We first send in Rubidium to bait a Dragon type move and then switch to Gabro. But because Outrage does not continue if it doesn't work, but only to get off one charm thanks to Prankster. Which just leaves Rubidium. Which just leaves Rubidium. With the choice band to live on 49 HP. And they just aren't strong enough. Meaning they go down and the run is over. We were so close to beating them. And I bet with this team, it would be possible if we didn't lose Marble to Kara. But with that all being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, please leave a like and tell me what you thought about the game in the comments below. And if you want, check out these other videos as well. So until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye bye.